And the second thing is, when someone is in the intensity of the 72 hours, the first 72 hours of some stay in hospital is the most important to me, the biggest determinant of whether they avoid decompensating the hospital setting, and you can get them back home, and the faster you get somebody back home, the better their long-term um, prognosis is. Um, and, the, and the intensity of input, both diagnostic, medical, therapy, social care input, is in, in, in massively improved. And then we, everyone, well, someone's admitted, everyone takes a collective exhalation of brain and says, well, both carers, clinicians, everyone goes, well, at least they're in a place of safety. And that's not acceptable, because the individual isn't benefiting from prolonged stays in the case. I think as well there's, a, there's an issue about phraseology. This, is, this all comes from, a, the, the phrase was actually exit book, and it came from a, a report from the uh, Institute of Education uh, Care Medicine. And an exit block was, was described and discussed quite, quite at length. And that is the process where you go into the, your ED department and you can't get out because the exit is closed. But exit block suddenly became bedrock, which then got stuck in the papers. So it's, of course, bedrock everyone realises. And so that's the bit that, that got, got ready without raised. The other thing is, I mean, I think, I think of, there are some, some major wins that we can get because it doesn't, because the hospital is so big and the throughput is so great that if we can just make them get someone home at a few hours earlier, that frees up huge amounts of beds. So if we can get everyone, everyone out in the morning rather than the evening, all our problems will be solved. Doing that, that's a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was, I was reminded, uh, I live in, I live uh, in Royal Road in Roadworks, and uh, there's a controversy system. And I, I always worry, wonder why the traffic just stops you know, for about 15 minutes. And there's no accident, it just stops. Um, and it's, it's, uh, and I was watching, I was reading some analysis around the, uh, the origins of a traffic jam. And it's, it's one person putting their brakes on, mm -hmm. which re requires the person behind to put their brakes on, which then mm -hmm. filters down, and then they have to come to a dead stop. Mm -hmm. And then the people behind come to a dead stop, and then suddenly the whole, the whole process comes to a dead stop because of small points of delays in the process. And, and, and that's, in part, as David said, if, if we don't have to have people touch their brakes when they're moving from the emergency department into, their, into a bed, because the bed is being cleaned and prepared and ready for the, the, the inevitable surgery, it always happens between two and five. We know that people come into the hospital to be admitted between two and five. That's the big, that's when most people arrive by ambulance to be admitted to the hospital. And yet the beds typically aren't ready, people aren't being discharged until five, six, seven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So of course it's a bit like the break mm -hmm. being put on. Yeah. They're sat in their bay waiting to go up to a bed, but the bed's not ready, so the people behind have to then touch their brakes and wait in the queue, and then mm -hmm. actually that, within a second that means that they've got three or four ambulances queuing outside, mm -hmm. waiting to unload their patients. Not because there aren't sufficient capacity, but because the contrary model, if one person puts their brakes in it all in the backs, I'm using some strawberry analogies today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They're good. Two. <laughs>